And Christ's call to holiness has never changed. In fact, we live in the present based on the past. Let's read what else they knew, okay? You know what's so much fun, the more you study the Bible? When I read Galatians 2.20, I don't just think of a white page with black type on it. I think of people living in this town with the troops of dancing girls giving them alcohol and being tempted every day getting this verse. This, do you all know Galatians 2.20? How many of you have it memorized? You learned it in school or Sunday school? I'm crucified with Christ. You, none of, there's no one in this whole room that has Galatians 2.20 memorized? Let's try again. How many of you know Galatians 2.20? There we go. That is one of the most important verses in the New Testament. In fact, you should be listening to the professors, if for nothing else, to find out some of the most important verses in the Bible. Because you know what the really important ones are? They know them by heart. Because they need them so much. This verse says that we live in the present based on the past. I'm not living in the present wondering if this is going to work. I already know that it's a past event that's once and for all settled and it works, okay? And look what these people knew. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. By the way, that's Paul's testimony. Paul, Paul said, you know what? The way I know I'm saved, he loved me and he gave himself for me. That's the whole idea of redemption, of a substitute, of the redeemer. And Paul says, that's my testimony. The one who loved me and gave himself for me. But he says, the way I live my life with all the, the, the wickedness, the cesspool. Paul, Paul was doing missionary journeys. I mean, every time Paul walked through town, he walked through the gymnasium area where everybody was exercising with no clothes on. He walked through the bathhouse area where everybody was, was taking baths with no clothes on, with, with more of these slaves, you know, ladies in there. I mean, you talk about the wickedness that was pervasive. They, they didn't even think it was wickedness, it was normal. It was kind of like they lived in an unclothed culture. How do you live in an unclothed culture? I have been crucified with Christ. When Jesus died on the cross, he died in my place. And he has disarmed the power that Satan used to have over me through those sins. As long as the life which I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. So guess what? Either you're floating along with the world or you're resisting it. With Jesus, there's no middle ground. You can't coast. Remember, we already covered that with the Ephesians. You can't tread water. Either you float along or you resist. Now, real quickly, let's see. It's 841, slide 11. I'll blame it on the quiz. When I was little, we used to have canoe trips in our church. You know what a canoe trip was? Uh, they would take the whole youth group, and we'd all be excited. We'd get on a school bus. Behind the school bus was a trailer with a bunch of canoes on it and all the gear. They would drive upstream of this river that was you know, kind of meandering down, They'd put us all in, our canoes in, everyone had a life jacket, everyone had a paddle, no one stayed in the canoe, everybody was splashing everybody with the paddles. But you know what curiously happened? No matter what we were doing, the canoes kept moving. It was the current of the river. See, they put you upstream, so all things flow downstream. And so we would be splashing and jumping in and out of the canoes and ducking each other, but we'd keep moving down the river because the canoes were traveling with the current. When you and I were born, we were born on a canoe trip. And we came into this world in our little canoe, and in and out of it, and we're having fun and splashing, and all of a sudden, our canoe bumped into someone. And he's standing here, and he's saying, hey, you keep going that way. It's the way of destruction. It's the wide way. The whole current of the world is going that way. But I want you to go that way. And if you are going to be my follower... You're going that way, toward the narrow gate, the straight way, the way of Christ. And Jesus, when we get saved, turns our canoe around and hands us the paddle. It says, you're not floating anymore. You're resisting the world. 
You're resisting the philosophies. You're resisting the errors. You're resisting the iniquities of this world. Did you know you never know the strength of the current till you put the paddle in? It's hard to resist the world. So you know what? With Jesus, there's no middle ground. He says, you aren't going to coast. You're not going to tread water. You're not going to float along. The world is a powerful river. Its current is always flowing away from God. That's what Matthew 7 says. And they're all going toward destruction, and you've got to go that way. And you know what happens when we go that way? People try and turn our canoe around. They go, we're bumping into everybody. Everybody's going to the party. We're not. We're going this way. They go, what's wrong with you? And they try and help us get reoriented to go where they're going. That's what First Peter's about. By the way, the Bible says there are only healthy Christians and sick Christians. And the question is, which are we? If it wasn't 843, I would take you to Isaiah. There are three verses that you really ought to have memorized and really ought to have marked. The first one is, Isaiah 32, 17, is the work of righteousness is peace, and the effects of righteousness is quietness and assurance forever. Wow. That means if you live the life of Christ, you are peaceful, assured, confident, and people feel that. They see that. You know what Isaiah 48, 18 says? Oh, that you had hearkened unto me. Then should your peace have been as the river. You know what a river is? It's constantly flowing. You would have constant flowing peace. And your righteousness like the waves of the sea. What's that? Constantly renewed. Versus Isaiah 57, 20. You know what that says? The wicked are like the restless sea, constantly troubled and foaming up all their shame. That's how we were born. Isaiah 57, 20. When we meet Christ, if we're healthy, we're Isaiah 32, 18. Righteousness and peace 